Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. Probably the most common message that I get on Facebook is people sending their support and telling me that they'd like to do the same thing that I'm doing. Usually those messages include asking me for tips or different things. A lot of those are related to what they need before they make that jump. That's a really long list, but we're going to go over some of the high points. Number one, you're going to need a good truck. Sorry to burst your bubble there, Blaine, but the uh, Subaru that your parents bought before you went to college ain't going to cut it. Your own personal goals with your homestead really determine what kind of truck is going to be best for you. Thing is, you're not buying a truck. You're buying a tractor that you happen to be able to take to town. It gets used to drive places. It gets used to drag logs around. It gets used to move snow out of the way. It is arguably the most critical piece of equipment that you're going to have. You're going to want to get something reliable. But in all reality, reliable equals one thing. Money. So as a backup to reliable, go with fixable. Old trucks are simple to work on. When something goes wrong, it's not some random sensor that just decided it didn't want to work anymore. That for some reason is electronically tied in with a bunch of other crap that's unrelated. And because old trucks are simpler, have less parts, that's less points of failure. If you can get a service body, I highly recommend it. So you can carry the tools to fix it with you. I lost the distributor on this one on the way up here. Still made it. Got fixed in the parking lot of a grocery store. So let's dispel with this myth. A new truck is going to be more reliable 95% of the time. But for the cost of a new truck, I could buy 10 of those. Plus it's kind of sexy. Shut up. Tip number two, have all the tools you can possibly have before you leave town. I got some there. Some in there. Hey, there's my tape measure. Got some right there. A few of them. Got a few hanging out in there. There's some more. A few down there. You get the point. In many ways, the whole reason for building a homestead from scratch is because you don't want to have to go to other people to run your life for you. Having the tools helps you get there. Next tip, have a way to make money. This ain't some idyllic life where I just moved off to the woods so I go talk to the squirrels all day long. Still gotta make money. So if you don't have any background knowledge in a trade, I suggest you learn one. Believe it or not, your bachelor's degree in feminist dance therapy doesn't get you very far up here. What do you do for a living? I'm a junior executive for a mid-level marketing company. How about you? I take old rectangles off of houses and put new rectangles on them. One of these people has a job, the other one has an overinflated sense of self-importance. Choose wisely. On top of that, it is really easy to get a job if you know a trade. I didn't go through any interview, I didn't have to take a personality test, <laughs> there definitely wasn't a background check. It was, hey man, I heard you know how to roof. Yep, come to work Monday. Okay. My next tip is on that same note, gain knowledge beforehand. Life is the same for everybody. We're all learning as we go. But you make choices along the way and that's what determines where you get to. Instead of spending the evening watching Netflix, figure out something you don't know how to do. Go down the YouTube rabbit hole and learn it. You're not just gonna get one way to do it. You're gonna get multiple different ways to do it. Opinions, tricks and tips to make life easier with it. People have done it before and they want to tell you how to do it. So you don't really have an excuse not to know. And the final thing, have a plan, but be flexible. Y'all had not seen too many updates with the cabin? This is why. When I set my bottom logs on this long wall, I set the wall up to be too long for the logs that I had. So I don't have enough logs to go all the way up. What are we gonna do about that? My cabin that was once gonna be a conventional build is now gonna be an A-frame. Cause I've got enough logs to do that. My two by eights that were gonna be my rafters, now they're gonna be my purlins. And my old decking boards that were gonna be my purlins. Well, I have no idea, but I'm flexible with it. They'll get used somewhere. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed watching. I love y'all, God bless.